Wow. Still, still got it. It's definitely still got it. Yeah. I like that advice. Don't think, just exercise. I mean, let's say, if you're going to take advice from anyone, that's the man who can convince you that that is the way to do it. Yeah, and in his book, he talks very honestly about quite, some quite big mistakes he's made mm -hmm. and decisions just to try and rebuild and come back again. Properly I will not, inspirational. I will not accept that Kindergarten Cop <laughs> was a mistake at all. <laughs> One of his best films. <laughs> Neither would he. Exactly. He th yeah, he says they're all great because they made money. I love this, by the way. Yeah. Not at all intimidating. <laughs> no. uh, you are watching BBC Breakfast. It is exactly 8.59. Live from Jerusalem, this is BBC News. Our top headlines this hour. There are growing calls for a humanitarian pause on hostilities in Gaza, so more aid can be let in. The United Nations is warning they may need to stop their operations as soon as later today because there isn't enough fuel. And the situation on Israel's northern border with Lebanon remains increasingly tense. Hello from Jerusalem, I'm Lise Doucette. It's 11 a.m. in the morning. Our top story this hour, a UN agency which looks after Palestinian refugees, UNRWA, has warned it may need to stop its aid work in Gaza as soon as tonight if it doesn't receive urgent deliveries of fuel. Overnight, eight trucks carrying food, water and medicine cross the Rafah border between Egypt and Gaza. But Israel has banned fuel from entering the territory, saying Hamas could use it for military purposes. Hamas is designated as a terrorist organization by many Western governments, including the United Kingdom. But around the world, there are growing international calls for a humanitarian pause in the fighting to allow desperately needed aid to reach the residents of Gaza. Our Middle East correspondent, Yolan Nell, has all the latest developments. Yolan Nell, our Middle East correspondent, thank you very much uh, for joining us uh, yet again on BBC News and around the world and across the United Kingdom. You're watching BBC News. Well, let's take a moment now to look at other stories making headlines around the world. Rescue efforts have resumed after a British cargo ship sank in the North Sea. One person died in the incident and four others are still missing. It happened after two ships collided off the coast of Germany. The Coast Guard said that divers were searching the shipwreck on the sea for signs of life. A former parliamentary staff member has described how physical, emotional and psychological abuse by the MP he worked for left him a broken shell of a man he once was. Peter Bone was suspended as a Conservative MP after an investigation found he had bullied and was sexually in, with sexually inappropriate comments around the individual. Mr. Bone has denied the allegations. And those are the latest news live on BBC News. Well, let's return to our top stories this hour, including the situation on Israel's northern border with Lebanon. It is becoming increasingly tense, with warnings that the Israel-Gaza war could expand to other parts of the region, even beyond Lebanon and Israel's northern border. These are the latest images of Israeli tanks at that northern border with Lebanon on Tuesday. And we do know that Israel has been evacuating dozens of settlements in that area, worried uh, that there could be even more cross-border fire by the Lebanese Hezbollah group. Well, for more on this, our correspondent 
is in Israel's northern border and a foster. And this is it at this hour in a highly combustible crisis in Israel, in the Gaza Strip, and also right across the region and far beyond. In the last hour, the Israeli Defense Forces have given an update on their operations overnight, saying that they struck a senior commander of Hamas, who used to play a very important role. They also said that they destroyed what they described as Hamas's emergency infrastructure, accusing Hamas of setting up roadblocks to prevent Gazans from moving south. Israel again reiterated its order that people have to move south to avoid getting in harm's way, and it said that people would be able to get aid there. But the United Nations is saying that as early as tonight, they could stop their operations because they're running out of fuel. Stay with us here on BBC News. Whether you're in Washington, Wisconsin, or even back in the UK, we take you behind the scenes, explaining US news, culture, and the era-defining presidential election. AmeriCast, a BBC News podcast, untangling America. Listen weekly on BBC Sounds. Live from Jerusalem, this is BBC News. The headlines at this hour. There are growing calls for a humanitarian pause on hostilities in Gaza so that desperately needed aid can be let in. UN aid workers have warned they could have to end their aid operations in Gaza later today because they don't have enough fuel. And the situation on Israel's northern border with Lebanon remains increasingly tense. Hello, I'm Lise Doucette. We're live from Jerusalem this hour. Well, there are growing calls for a humanitarian pause in the fighting between Israel and Hamas so that more aid can be allowed to enter Gaza. So far, Israel has allowed food, water and medicine into the territory. But the UN says there's not enough convoys and Israel also isn't allowing fuel supplies over fears that the fuel will end up in the hands of Hamas and be used for military operations. The US Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, has come up with a new proposal. He has suggested a temporary lull in hostilities, not a full ceasefire. Well, the war between Israel and Hamas, as we've been reporting, is having repercussions and sparking recrimination in every corner of this volatile region. A key player across this region is Iran. And the country's ambassador to the United Nations told the UN Security Council on Tuesday that Anthony Blinken had attempted to wrongly blame Iran for the Israel-Gaza war. Henry Zeffman, very good to get an update uh, from you about what's been happening in Britain. It's What's happening in Britain is happening in capitals right around the world. Let's just update you on some of the latest developments this hour. The French President Emmanuel Macron, which, who was visiting Israel yesterday, has now been meeting with King Abdullah II of Jordan. The French leader will then go on to the Egyptian capital Cairo, where he will meet the Egyptian leader, President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi. President Macron, one of many uh, Western leaders who has been traveling across the region, beginning in Israel, to make it absolutely clear that Israel had a right to defend itself after the horrific events of October the 7th, but also trying to make it absolutely clear, as we've heard time and again every day of this war, that even in wars there are rules and Israel should do everything possible to minimize civilian casualties and also to ensure that desperately needed aid is allowed to enter in ever greater quantities into the Gaza Strip. We're going to keep an eye on all the latest developments from Jerusalem across Israel and in the Gaza Strip. But for now, I'm going to say goodbye from Jerusalem. And around the world and across the United Kingdom, you are watching BBC News. BBC News, bringing you different stories from across the UK. For more stories from across the UK, head to the BBC News website. 
Live with BBC News with me, Lucy Gray. We'll be back with Liz Doucette in Jerusalem at the top of the hour. But let's take a look at some other news now. One of Donald Trump's former allies has told a court that his ex-boss would arbitrarily inflate his net worth. Michael Cohen once served as the former president's lawyer and fixer, but the relationship dramatically soured over the course of the Trump presidency. On Tuesday, he appeared as a witness at Donald Trump's civil fraud trial. He testified that the value of Trump's company whole company holdings would be whatever number Mr. Trump told us. Mr. Cohen said his responsibility was to reverse engineer assets to achieve the number. Here's our North America correspondent Nomia at Iqbal. Let's just show you some live pictures uh, from Gaza now. We can see uh, the skyline there. Um, it is around 11.30 in the morning, uh, 11.50 there, actually. Um, just to say some of the lines coming through to us today, that Pope Francis has renewed his calls for the release of hostages uh, held in Gaza and for humanitarian aid to be allowed uh, into the Gaza Strip. He was speaking at his weekly audience, uh, saying, I'm always thinking about the grave situation in Palestine and Israel, and I encourage the release of hostages and the entry of humanitarian aid into Gaza. There's plenty more on all of uh, what we're covering, uh, the latest developments on Gaza and Israel on our live page. Just go to the BBC website. Now, astronomers in the UK have made the biggest ever computer model of the evolution of the universe from the Big Bang to the present day using one of the most powerful supercomputers in the world. The model was based on the accepted theories of physics, but when it was compared to how the universe actually looks, there were significant differences. Our science correspondent Palab Ghosh reports. It's time for the weather now with Carol. Hello again. We've had some torrential rain this morning, leading to some flooding issues, for example, on the Isle of Wight, and it will turn chillier with some snow on the hills in the north. Live from Jerusalem, this is BBC News. There are growing calls for a humanitarian pause in hostilities in Gaza so that desperately needed aid can be allowed to be in. UN aid workers warn they may be forced to stop their aid operations as soon as later today if they don't receive more fuel. And the situation on Israel's northern border with Lebanon remains increasingly tense. Hello, I'm Lise Doucette. We're live with BBC News from Jerusalem. A UN agency which looks after Palestinian refugees, UNRWA, has warned that it could be forced to stop its aid operations in Gaza if it doesn't receive more urgently needed fuel. Overnight, eight trucks carrying food, water and medicine did enter Gaza through the southern crossing at Rafah with Egypt. Israel has banned any fuel from entering the Gaza Strip, saying Hamas could use it for military purposes. Hamas is designated as a terrorist organization by many Western governments, including the United Kingdom. But there are now growing calls for a humanitarian pause in the fighting to allow that desperately needed aid to reach the civilians of Gaza. Our Middle East correspondent Yola Nell looks at all the latest developments. Julia Tuma, spokesperson for UNRWA, thank you very much for joining us here on BBC News. And we're still hoping that we can connect to a resident in Gaza to find out what the situation is like living there. Around the world and in the United Kingdom, this is BBC News. Let's take now a brief look at some of the other stories which are making headlines around the world at this hour. Rescue efforts have resumed after a British cargo ship in the North Sea. One person had died in the in the in the rescue in the incident and four others are missing. It happened after two 
well, two ships collided off the coast of Germany. A new report says that global banking giants invest and are investing in companies which produce traditional Chinese medicine containing leopard and pangolin parts. Both species are classified as threatened species. And four UK astronauts could soon be heading into orbit on an all-British mission. An American company is helping it. You're watching BBC News. You're live with BBC News, bringing you the headlines this hour from Israel, Gaza and around the world. Well, the Israeli government has repeatedly been telling residents in the north of the Gaza Strip to evacuate as soon as possible to the south in order to provide, to find a safe refuge. Yesterday, it was distributing leaflets, warning of an imminent ground attack and telling residents that their safety could not be guaranteed if they stay in the north. But we've been hearing that there's bombing taking place, not just in the north, but also in the middle of the Gaza Strip, as well as in the south. And in the north, not everyone has been able to heed those warnings and they are choosing to remain in their homes. We've managed to reach uh, a resident of the northern Gaza Strip, Saeed Al-Azhar. He is in northern Gaza and joins us now. Saeed Al-Azhar, you may have heard the repeated warnings from Israel to leave the north of Gaza for your safety and protection. Why haven't you left yet? And that's Anna Foster reporting from the border with Lebanon. Stay with us here on BBC News. Travelling can be so much more than a holiday. It's about diving headfirst into new experiences. And seeing the world with fresh eyes. Where each destination tells a unique story. And every encounter brings a new perspective. Because all of these amazing places are made so much richer by the people who live in them. So unleash your spirit of adventure. And join us for a deeper understanding of the world. The Travel Show. Watch on BBC iPlayer. This is BBC News, the headlines. There are growing calls for a humanitarian pause in hostilities in the Gaza Strip so that desperately needed aid will be allowed to enter. UN aid workers are warning they may have to end their aid operations as soon as tonight if desperately needed fuel is not allowed to enter Gaza. And the situation on Israel's northern border with Lebanon remains increasingly tense. Hello, I'm Lise Doucette. Welcome to BBC News. We're live from Jerusalem as we report on the top headlines in the Israel-Gaza crisis. Day 19, three weeks of war. Today, the emphasis is from United Nations agencies and from countries around the world for a humanitarian pause in fighting between Israel and Hamas so that desperately needed aid can be allowed to enter. So far, food, water and medicine is being allowed into the territory. But Israel has drawn a red line on fuel, saying that Hamas will divert it to use it for its own military operations. Hamas is designated as a terrorist organization by many Western countries, including the United Kingdom. So the United Nations is repeating its calls, not just for that humanitarian pause, but also to allow that desperately needed fuel to enter. All the while, the images coming from the Gaza Strip, where Israel says it continues to target uh, Hamas infrastructure and to kill leading Hamas uh, leaders, continues. But at the United Nations in New York yesterday, the U.S. Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, didn't call for a ceasefire, but he did call for a temporary lull to allow the aid to enter. Henry Zeppelin with the latest from London. 
We'll say goodbye from Jerusalem from now on day 19 of this war. Back to you, to Lucy Gray in the studio. Thanks very much, Lee's back with you shortly. Now, in the UK, hospital failings are still causing too many deaths from sepsis, 10 years after a report highlighted steps to take, to take drastically reduced fatalities. Here's our health correspondent, Dominic Hughes. Just quickly to show you some pictures of Gaza where there's been a, a large explosion. You can see the huge plumes of smoke going up. We'll be live uh, with uh, Lise Doucette in Jerusalem at the top of the hour. So do stay with us here on BBC News. Hello again. We've had some torrential rain this morning, leading to some flooding issues, for example, on the Isle of Wight, with some snow on the hills in the north. This is BBC News, the headlines. Israel is under growing pressure to pause its bombardment of Gaza so desperately needed aid can get in. UN aid workers warn they may have to end their operations as soon as tonight because fuel is running out. If it does not come today, then we are going to be put in a very difficult situation where we're going to have to make the decision over a reduction of a humanitarian operation. And the situation on Israel's northern border with Lebanon remains tense. Let's cross lies to Lise Doucette in Jerusalem for all of the latest. Yes, you joined us in Jerusalem. It's uh, one o'clock in the afternoon here in Israel and in the Gaza Strip. Top story this hour, the UN agency, which looks after Palestinian refugees in Gaza, has warned it may be forced to stop its aid operations in Gaza as early, early as tonight if it doesn't receive more urgently needed supplies of fuel. UNRWA says it currently has, has been sheltering almost 600,000 people in its facilities, its very overcrowded facilities. And overnight, eight trucks carrying food, water and medicine were able to cross into Gaza at that Rafa crossing with Egypt and Gaza. But Israel has said that no fuel is allowed to enter. It accuses Hamas of trying to divert it for military purposes. Hamas has been designated as a terror organization by Western countries, including the United Kingdom. But at this moment, there are growing international calls for at least a humanitarian pause in the fighting to allow more of that desperately needed aid, including fuel, to enter Gaza and to reach the civilians under pressure. Our Middle East correspondent Yulong Nell has all the latest developments. Indeed, uh, Scott Walker, we hope to speak to you again, but thank you very much for joining us from Helsinki with your observations on what he has described as the most complex hostage situation he has come across in his many years of being involved 
in these kind of negotiations. Complex because there are more than 200 hostages involved, involving dozens of nationalities, and they include both civilians as well as soldiers. And many countries, including the Gulf state of Qatar, Egypt, Germany, Turkey, they are all trying to do their part. Across the world and across the United Kingdom, you're watching BBC News. Thanks for watching. Gray, let's take a look at some other stories making the news now. Rescue efforts have resumed after a British cargo ship sank in the North Sea. One person died in the incident and four others are missing. It happened when two ships collided off the coast of Germany. The Coast Guard said divers were searching the shipwreck on the sea floor for signs of life. A new report says global banking giants are investing in companies which produce traditional Chinese medicines containing leopard and pangolin parts. Both species are classed as threatened. The Env Environmental Investigation Authority identified 62 banks and financial institutions which are investing in three pharmaceutical groups making nine products it says contain leopard or pangolin. Four UK astronauts could soon be heading into orbit on an all-British mission. An American company that organises visits to the International Space Station is developing the plan. Houston-based Axiom has signed a memorandum of understanding with the UK Space Agency. Welcome back to Jerusalem with all the latest updates on this deepening crisis, day 19 of the Israel-Gaza war. Let's just take a closer look at the situation in the Gaza Strip. Our correspondent there, Rushdi Abu Alouf, said that there have been multiple airstrikes overnight, including airstrikes on the south of the Gaza Strip. That is where Israel has repeatedly been warning residents in the north to flee to. This is Rushdi's update on the situation now. Hmm. Mark Regev, we'll have to leave it there, but thank you very much uh, for joining us. Mark Regev is a senior advisor to the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. He's also a former ambassador, Israeli ambassador to the United Kingdom, making it clear why Israel is so angry with the UN Secretary General and why it won't allow fuel into Gaza. We'll continue our special coverage of this crisis, but for now, I'll hand you back to the studio in London. Now on BBC News, the latest business news from across the globe. World Business Report. Pakistan International Airlines cancels 300 flights as the carrier struggles to pay for jet fuel. Also, the US tells NVIDIA to take its chips off the table as Washington bans the company from exporting some of its products to China. Well, hello and welcome to World Business Report. I'm Lequesa Burek and we start in Pakistan where the national airliner says that it's cancelled more than 300 flights in the past 10 days as it struggles to pay for jet fuel. The cancellations, both domestic and international, have left thousands of passengers stranded. The company is facing its worst crisis in history, with the state oil company refusing to supply any more fuel unless its bills are paid up front. Let's get more on this from our correspondent in Islamabad, and that is uh, Caroline Davies. Uh, Caroline, I wonder if you could just tell us a little bit more about this. And that was our Asia business correspondent, Nick Marsh, there. In other news, uh, later today, Apple will be announcing plans to make its parts, tools and documentation widely available so that its iPhones and computers can now be fixed by independent repair shops. In August, Apple came out in support of right to repair legislation in its home state of California. Federal bill also enjoys Apple's support as President Biden wants to give consumers more control over fixing what they own. That is a World Business Report for this hour. More coming up later. Bye-bye.
Hello there, this is your update from the BBC Sports Centre. I'm Gavin Ramjohn. The Netherlands scored a huge upset at the Cricket World Cup last week with victory over South Africa, but it could be a tall order for another in Wednesday's match in New Delhi. They're in action against Australia, who won the toss and chose to bat first. And there we go, that's all the sport from us for now. We'll be back with more later on. We'll see you then. You're watching BBC News with me, Lucy Gray. One of Donald Trump's former allies has told a court that his ex-boss would arbitrarily inflate his net worth. Michael Cohen once served as the former president's lawyer and fixer. He's appeared as a witness at Donald Trump's civil fraud trial. Here's our North America correspondent, Nomia Iqbal. Nomia Iqbal reporting there. Just a reminder, we'll be back at the top of the hour with all of the latest on what's going on in Israel and Gaza. So do stay with us for that.